Hello there. My name is Rosabel Lokaising, and I'm so excited to be on Prosper's show today, the Online Prosperity Show podcast. It's just been a hoot, and we've been talking about alignment and what it means to be aligned in your services and vision and values in order to attract the right people for your tribe. Now, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, the platform where we bring you the insights and strategies that you need to achieve success and prosperity in the digital age. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today we've got a very special guest joining us. She's the CEO, founder, and the Clarity Breakthrough Catalyst of Connecting You. Please help me welcome Rosa. How are you doing today? I am doing very well, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on your podcast. It's just been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. And I'm excited to be here with you. Great stuff. So for those that are meeting Rosa for the uh, first time, Rosa has a passion for helping heart-centered entrepreneurs align with their true selves and their services. And Rosa empowers individuals to connect with their ideal clients so they can double their income and make a positive impact on the world. It is an absolute pleasure to have Rosa on the show today. Now, before we actually start running out of tape, Rosa, tell us about your journey as an entrepreneur and um, you know how your background has helped you become a renowned heart-centered business connector that you are today. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much. Well, it's really easy. You know, I was blessed with the right people all, all along my life. I've had mentors all through, starting with my father. And uh, when I saw the way my father built community in his last seven years of his career, he found his dream job. And uh, when I saw the way he treated people just by opening his heart and, and offering to help, and and his job was to build communities. So he built communities with men and with women. And uh, I was with him a lot of the time and observed the way he interacted and connected with people. And it just made it look so easy to get to know people. So I found that connecting with others was very simple. However, once I started working, I saw that it wasn't that simple for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of withholds and shyness and introvertness uh, on the field. And I didn't uh, really realize how difficult it could be for some people. However, as I started off in banking, then moved to recruiting and then moved into employment consulting. And that's where I really saw the value of networking in a way that makes a difference. However, before that happened, as I said, I had many mentors. One of my mentors was one of my bank managers um, who did a lot of networking. And then one of my school teachers, Lona Kangaloo, who I'm sure we'll talk about later, who really impacted, again, generosity of heart, kindness. She was always kind to her students. And so it, it was really um, special for me to see people in position, people in authority, be so kind and gracious to others. And that's what I role modeled. I role modeled a lot of these people as I was growing up as a child. And now having come to Canada in 1976, I already started working at a very young age. Um, and, and so having moved from all of these categories, I moved into uh, employment consulting and saw that I had an opportunity to work with tons of internationally trained professionals. And they really needed to learn how to network in a new country. And that way they had twice the challenge. So when we see entrepreneurs having trouble here locally as a native Canadian, it's another thing to have an international professional come into a new country and try to network to get a job. So I had to really get good at networking so that I can teach them the skill in a way that they can use it. So I started simulating events in the classroom, bringing in hors d'oeuvres and fruits and, and uh, having them interact and play with it so that they can get over the intimidation and fear and, and, and that grew. 
But eventually, as my projects uh, came to an end, I joined a program with the Board of Trade here in the local area, Mississauga, and I saw that entrepreneurs needed it just as much as newcomer professions. So then I started a company called Connecting You so that I can help entrepreneurs not only exchange business cards, but really get to connect at their first meeting. So I can help them see how, you know, I know that we're already connected in spirit. We're already connected spiritually. Some people are aware of that, but some aren't. And because they aren't, I think the mind gets in the way of making an impression <clears throat> and uh, having to perform in a certain way to be liked, to be accepted. And what I got the opportunity to do was to connect, help connect them and help teach them how to break through the ice in their first meeting. How can you connect by heart at a deeper level, in spirit, in heart, in soul, at soul level, just by asking the right questions? And of course, having the right energy so the your facial expressions are more welcoming and inviting so a lot of it had to do with a lot more than just techniques and strategies but with a lot of the physiology body language the whole bit so I went into studying a lot of that before I even did my first program fantastic and I really appreciate that you have become an expert in all of this but the very thing that really caught my attention is the fact that this was role model to you by your dad. And as a father of two girls, I've now really started, um, you know, thinking, wait a minute, is what I'm doing, what my, I want my girls to represent themselves in the future and things of that nature um, in, in, in that sort of aspect. So what, what has the role of having a father figure like you did really influenced how you now connect and how you now do business? You know what, that honestly, I could talk about that for days. I know we just have a half an hour, so I will keep it short. Um, my dad was a person of character. My dad was one of the most genuine, heart-centered, trustworthy gentlemen you would meet. Well, he would care for just about anybody on the street, and he would just be just as communicative or open with the beggar on the street as he would with the governor general that he met. And his graciousness is what really struck me, how consistent he was and how um, elegant he was at all times. And he was careful in his communication. He was careful to listen for what what positions people were in so he could relate in a like manner to them, with them. And, and so he would always come to their level to relate with them. And he had, our house was like an open house where he would have people coming off the street to come and consult with Mr. Lokaising. So even though he would offer them a drink, he was, he would not drink. But he made sure he had an, a, some type of drink he can offer people because he knew some people would appreciate a glass of wine or, or scotch or something. He just made sure he was prepared for everything. He was like the best Boy Scout in the world. And, and because of his um, demeanor and his, his character, he tended to attract people who wanted to be mentored by him. So he always mentored younger people as well. And that included my cousins, you know, and other friends. And and so he was asked to, then he became a master of ceremonies at all kinds of functions and events. So he was called out to do special things for people because he made everyone feel special. And see, the way he talked with people I, I learned from that, that the first thing you must do is ask them about them. Where are they? What do you want to do? What is troubling you? What is the problem? Because we know the problem. And when he has gathered enough information, only then will he respond 
to offer any word of advice or or story. And he loved using stories. As kids, he told the stories all the time to send the message home, you know. And and so in, and he was a school teacher to begin with. So that teaching character in him as well, where he always wanted to teach and uplift somebody. So his teaching was not to scold, but to uplift. Because every time in high school, as I was growing up, if I didn't pass an exam and I would be terrified because not because he would do something, but because I would be disappointing him, he turned it around. And he just congratulated me on the four subjects I passed brilliantly with distinctions rather than looking at the one I failed. And I will never forget that moment. Never, never, never. So for somebody who's always uplifting and always making it easy for people to show up, it became easy for me to talk to people, to reach out to people and to just be kind to everyone. Fantastic. And well, thank you to um, Mr. Lokai Singh for having done that, all that positive reinforcement. And I remember when we had a chat the last time, you said he would sing to you, pretend you are happy, even if you're feeling blue from uh, Nat King Call. I want to ask you something, uh, Rosa. What would dad be saying right now if he was here and seeing what you have done and taken over from him? You know, I actually had a vision where he came to me and he actually said, Rosabel, because that's my full name on my yeah. birth certificate, Rosabel, I'm very proud of you. Oh. I'm so happy with all that you are doing. That was when I was with internationally trained professionals and serving them to find yeah. a job in their new homeland. And uh, he walked across the campus because I was at this college um, campus. He walked across and gave me a big hug and congratulated me on the work that I was doing to help so many hundreds and hundreds of internationally trained professionals. Oh, so it has happened. That's nice. That's nice. And you've gone on. Um, I've also heard that you started not only just doing it for the professionals, but you're now um, organizing business matching retreats where you actually connect business owners and you foster collaborative uh, partnerships with them over there. Because um, I viscerally believe that if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. And I think you really have embodied that. And that really sounds fascinating that you're doing this business matching retreats. Now, can you share some maybe examples of successful partnerships that have actually emerged from these retreats? Because it, it is life changing what you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, when I started my own business about six years ago called Connecting You, um, where I really wanted businesses to connect, my, my dream was that we would build a heart-centered community because I found that uh, business was still too transactional and there wasn't enough heart in doing business. So I thought, well, this would be my contribution to our local community. If I could bring people together to help them open their hearts and start talking love in the workplace and really falling in love with each other, you don't have to wait for the the love of your life to fall in love. I mean, I fall in love every day. And so having that atmosphere internally, actually, again, just automatically exudes it outside. And so for us to be able to do that internally is the first thing. So we get them aligned with their own values. What are your values? Have you been clear? So once they become clear with their values, then they can match the vision that they had created to the values. So then I have them tweak that vision so it's matched. So all the matching and alignment comes from internal. Once that happens, then when we get together in a retreat, it makes it much easier to align with somebody else whose values resonate with yours. Because you will see, you laugh at the same thing. You, you, you speak a similar language. You know, um, you like similar shows on TV. So it's easy, then a conversation ensues because they recognize something you said in that retreat or in that workshop. 
And what's interesting, before I brought these 12 people together, I had already in my mind thought of who I might be able to match. And what was nice was they automatically were drawn to the very same person who I helped promote. And so once they got matched, they had several meetings that uh, they would then start exploring uh, the resonance. I even had a TV show for six months that did that. And uh, too bad I don't have the proofs of it to show on broad screen, but it was on a local channel. And um, once we got them matched even on screen, it was amazing that one person was doing speaking engagements and the other one was looking for speakers. And so they would hook up and, and support each other. You know, one had clientele that was resonant with the other one's clientele. So they would get together and do an event so that when they bring their communities together, they both win. And, and so there was there were quite a few of them that did that. Um, one was a broadcaster and uh, he was writing a book and then he met somebody else who actually got him into the right studios, the right locations for him to promote his book and for him to, um, you know, just get more publicity. So he was a journalist broadcaster, but he di didn't necessarily have the avenues where he could promote himself. And so that was a kind of alignment that these uh, matching retreats did for people. Fantastic. You see, um, I viscerally believe that the more you um, connect with other people, more things start happening. And obviously that's, you know, proof that the work that you're doing is really, really uh, changing lives. Now, what I find mainly when people are sort of networking or connecting is they just dwell on surface level communication which is basically talk about the weather talk about what somebody else is wearing and then they fail to utilize the actual um connecting methods that you have but when we connected you have a unique approach to engaging with people by asking thought provoking uh questions and um my question now is how do you believe this practice of asking daring questions can actually lead to deep and meaningful conversations that people can have? Great question. Because, you know, it takes courage to get personal in a public place. So look at the words, courage, personal, and public. So it is a personal conversation. And who, which one of us has been taught when we were um, growing up or in the workplace that we could even get personal? You know, it was against the law, so to speak. You know, make sure they're professional. And so as we grew in the marketplace and we evolved and we got more global, we realized that cultures were very different in relating. And having worked with internationally trained professionals, I mean, my heart was touched many times when I saw the pain that internationally trained professionals went through because they didn't network the way Canadians network. And so I made a point of educating the employers as to how they can change their way of networking and connecting to internationally trained professionals. And so by not just having people come into the melting pot here, it was just as important for the receiving party to make some changes as well. So that you don't just show me a banquet and when you come, you can't even touch it. When you come, you should be able to partake of it. So if, uh, if you use the same ingredients, some of the ingredients that I used in my meals, then I'll be able to partake of your food. But if you used all the different spices that only a Canadian can appreciate, how can I enjoy the food? Mm. So I haven't used that analogy. It's about if I were to ask you, but uh, Prosper, you are, you seem to have come from an African background, but yet you're in Australia. How did you get there? I went right to it, yeah. right? Because my mind is working over time, seeing these in the synchronicities and the things that are not congruent, the incongruencies. And it's like, oh, that isn't adding up here. How did that translate into that? <laughs> so it's by having a curious mind, 
right? And if people were more curious, then the questions become very organic. So it, I don't have to think about it. Or you're wearing purple and I go, oh my, you were wearing my next favorite color. You have purple on. I absolutely love that color. Is that your favorite color? Now we've gotten a little personal already, right? Really? So I can give people a list of questions that they can ask. And that's what I often do is uh, just uh, to get them acquainted, send them out a list and, uh, you know, just just say something that's different rather than what do you do for a living you know it feels like I'm a robot that's all you want to know about me what I do it's who am I what what do you really want to what you really want to do is get to know who is that person on the other side of the screen on the other side of the table absolutely I absolutely love that while you were talking I was trying to count how many times you mentioned the word give and so many people hardly have that word in their vocabulary because they are predisposed to just take, 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 take and not give anything in return. And I grew up knowing that givers get. And um, the more you give, the more you get to receive. And just looking at what we're doing right now, we've given off of our time. And the yeah. fact that we're actually freezing this moment in time, it is now a gift to whoever is watching it in as much as they can watch this at their own time and also take any lessons from where they are, um, you know, where they are in life. But you also have a gift that you are offering us in, in terms of, um, you know, the way you work and it's about getting clear, getting visible, and uh, it's an assessment tool. Just walk us through uh, what that entails and how people can get their hands on it. Thank you. Really, when I started business, um, it was challenging the first year because oh, I met a lot of people. I'm a networker after all. Meeting people is the easy part. But are these all the people that I want to work with? Are, are, are my people in all those groups? Um, the answer was no. Um, so I had to kick back and, and look and see, well, wait a minute, who am I being here? Who do I want to be in business? And it, I only got clear about that when I bumped into this woman at a networking event um, and amongst 150 people that she met, she was about to leave. And when I met her, she says, oh, my goodness, I'm so glad I didn't leave because now I know why I came here. And I said, why is that? She said, I came to meet you. I go, oh, wow, that's amazing. We connected instantly. And uh, she told me about the motivational map report. And uh, she had me do that assessment. It took me only 15 minutes. And once I did that, I got a report that actually told me what my three key motivators were and my biggest demotivator. And so this report has three clusters and nine dimensions. So the three clusters are uh, relationships, uh, growth, and achievement. And, and each cluster has three dimensions. And within those, you can be one dimension from each cluster, or you may have two dimensions from, each, from one cluster and one from another. So there's no wrong or right. And um, I found out that mine was, I'm a searcher, I'm a spirit, and I'm an expert. And most of us think we're motivated by our children, our wife or grandfather or somebody external. But the truth is every human being is intrinsically motivated beyond whom they meet in this life. And, and a lot of people are not aware of what that is. And this map allows you to find that out. And I was just amazed at how valid this was it validated me so much because the searcher looks for meaning in life. And then I realized why I had the courage to take my keys up, put it on the desk and walk out of two corporations. Who does that? Only a person with high purpose and strong conviction that they must serve a certain sector in this life and can't do anything else. If you were to pay me $300,000 a year and say, well, you only have to work in this tobacco company for a year and get that money and then you can do whatever you want after, I'd say, no, thank you, because I, I just 
that's the one time I will say can't. My heart won't allow me to. If I did, I would be suffering. So yes, you can, but your heart, your soul won't let you. So what are you led by? You're led by your spirit. And this map, the report in here really shows you this. Now, my other motivator was the spirit. The spirit is somebody who actually has big vision and sees a picture way beyond what the average person can see. And so you tend to be able to pull people along with you, sometimes even without a logical explanation, because your conviction is so strong that they believe that you do have eyes to see that treasure ahead of you, and they will come with you. So the spirit is very autonomous, really likes um, to, cannot stand micromanagement, has to be a leader, you know, has to bring people along. That's the spirit and the expert. Well, we all know the expert has to have right information, must be accurate in their presentation, must be the go-to person in the topic. So these are just examples of what three of the motivators are. And once I understood that, I was able to speak differently, Prosper. It was interesting because all of a sudden my confidence came back. Because remember, I'd been a professional for all these years, right? For 25 years. And these last five years, I'm now in a business. It's like, this is a different world. Absolutely. How do I speak about who I am in business as opposed to being a professional? Well, the map gave me the confidence to do that and the clarity. So I no longer needed a script. And so I'd love everybody to do it. So for my entrepreneur and professionals right now, they all do it at the beginning of any coaching session or workshop that I have. And uh, I would like to offer them a free, a complimentary breakthrough call. And uh, that is usually $4.97. And I am willing to take off $400 off that right off the top and have them have it at my cost, $97. Fantastic. I really appreciate that offer. And we'll definitely put the links to that uh, assessment on there because it really puts it out in the open. Because if you don't know what motivates you, then you're not going to be able to show up in your best um, you know, possible uh, space. And you're not going to be able to find your people or the right kind of clients or the right kind of, um, you know, jobs that actually inspire you to want more, be more and have more. So I really appreciate that you've opened up the doors for us to um, experience that. Now, you mentioned yeah, something that is um, very interesting there, Rosa. And, um, you know, I, I just couldn't help but ask you, um, the 25 years that you spent in corporate, right? And now you've got these five years that you've completely revolutionized the networking, the way that people, um, you know, connect and how you are actually helping them approach uh, this whole space. Entrepreneurship often comes with its own fair uh, share of you know challenges now can you maybe share with us some of the uh, personal experiences that you faced uh, along the 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 adjustment you know because 25 years of being told what to do to five years of now saying hey I've got this you know aligning with your uh, values and your mission and how you've managed to overcome them and hence we're here today Yes, thank you so much. So let me correct myself. So it's six years in business, right? Absolutely. Yes. And, and yes. And so with those 25 years in corporate, I could shine because I knew exactly what to do. I even always got team lead and led my department and, and uh, aligned with my managers so that I could get on a management consultant team. And it was easy because, again, my motivators were the spirit and searcher. So I didn't even know that, but that's what led me. <clears throat> and then the expert. So when you're an expert, it becomes easy again to produce excellent work. So to be a top-notch professional, easy, piece of cake. Oh my goodness, becoming a businesswoman? Well, it was the biggest personal development course I had ever done. Right. I thought, how dare I? How dare I think I could do this? What made me think I could do this by the second year, at the end of the first year? I, 
yet in my first year, all my colleagues were saying, oh, my goodness, you only started this year. I thought you'd been in business years ago because look at how many workshops you've done and how many events that you're doing. And I was like, well, uh, the activity I've been doing all my life, but you don't know how I'm suffering behind the scenes, right? So it was it, it, I had to take time off from networking and then do this assessment and soul search. And that's when I realized I need to work with heart-centered entrepreneurs because I couldn't get people who were very left brain, logical, rational to come over to this side of creativity and, and you know, and go, getting to the source. So sometimes when you even use words like the source, divinity, divine, they go, what are you talking about? Or soul <laughs> or spirit. It's like, who are you? I came here for results. A plus B equals C. A two plus two equals four. I'm, this is not working for me. So I had to find my niche. And it took me a while to figure that out. So I had to put out a ton of money to take some coaching to figure out who my niche is, how to position myself, how to do the elevator pitch, and you know how to present myself at networking events. So networking was no longer as easy as it was before. Because now I'm supposed to be niched down and targeted for attracting the right five people that week out of the hundreds that I meet because I met lots of people. But I didn't realize that it would take so much time to drill down. And it's only after those workshops and courses and programs that I took that I started to really get my head clear and see that I had to also be selective after I would say putting out, I, I don't I don't think any of it has been wasted, but sometimes some of them are not aligned with your teaching, your style of learning. And so I did put out a lot of money that did not serve me the way I expected. But it's only now in the last couple of years that I'm finding the people that can serve me that really align with my thinking that are heart centered. And you know, one of them who we've met and that really comes from the heart and loves to serve and really doesn't have to script out everything. So I had to learn that I, I do not go to just any coach. And that's what I help my clients with now. It's not about this cookie cutter course or that course, just because it's he's the biggest motivator in the world or he's the biggest coach in the world. It has nothing to do with that. It's about how aligned is your coach with you? How aligned are you in your beliefs and your thinking? That came to be the most important guiding light for me to find the right people to coach me, to help me, to teach me. And so now I am teaching my clients the very same thing. How aligned are you with that person? Study them first, get a testimonial from somebody who's worked with them, and then learn the lessons that relate to you. See how you fit. If you're not comfortable with just going in and putting in systems and going digital right away and learning social media right away, then don't do it that way. Do it the way that meets your needs, right? Because our personalities are very unique. And I think until you get to know who you really are, and that's why these assessments are so helpful, um, hold on to your money and spend money on self-assessment, self-evaluation, personal development before you go for professional development. That is the best advice I can give to people. The struggles were many. I was not, I was doing a lot of discovery calls and not necessarily finding the right people to work with. And now it's much easier. I do far less discovery calls and my conversion rate is much higher. And uh, I get to meet with amazing people like you and and the others that you know in our circle and it's fantastic fantastic I, I was just you know eating up every single word that you were talking about there because 
the one thing that distinguishes a professional and an entrepreneur is as a professional, you are already given a brand and a product or a service to sell. Whereas as an entrepreneur, you are the service, you are the product. People have to buy into you first. And there's yet another level, which is you have to buy into you first. So there's there's that whole sales that goes on behind the scenes before you actually um, get the money and everything else that you uh, go through, maybe the false starts or the shiny objects, um, you know, in terms of courses or whatever it is that people do, I believe that will be part of the story that people get to tell. Because if you don't go through that, you wouldn't have a good story to tell. If you don't have a testimony, you cannot test the money. Anyway, exactly. uh, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> you, you can tell we're really so much uh, aligned. But you know, in the interest of just really getting to um, conclude what we've just started here, I know we could go on and on and on. It's so beautiful to just hear you talk and, you know, put out your life story and everything else there. What What, what is your vision of the future? Now that you have, you know, entered my audience, you've given them, um, you know, a taste of who you are and things of that nature. That was before. And if they're going to be excited about jumping on board with you, what is it that they can expect, um, you know, to, to, to find themselves if they continue, you know, following through to you? And where do you see either yourself or connecting you in sort of the uh, next coming years? Well, thank you for asking that. It's been it's been a changing vision, you know, and I'm sure you understand that because with the marketplace having changed so much in the last three years as well, um, I, I started pulling back and I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't dream so big anymore. Maybe I should rethink this. And um, yeah, a few doubts stepped in in the last few years. However, I feel that I've come back through that uh, tunnel and back into some clarity and I am really excited to have uh, just a small team, three or four um, coaches working with me that have come to understand what I do and can do exactly what I do in their way, bring their addition to the table. Um, and then I can do more talks because I really love uh, speaking on stage and inspiring and motivating people to just get up and get. Let's just wake up. Let's wake up a group of people at one time. And it reminds me of when I was doing volunteer projects. I've done a lot of volunteer work, which I love doing. And I don't usually talk about that or even publicize it on Facebook because I don't think that's the idea. Um, but but I just want to share how much I loved it uh, when we did something like we cleaned up the Don Valley River. And so there were like a few hundred of us doing this. But we to get the teams together, we had to reach out, call, engage people, enroll people. And I love enrolling. And so enrolling people is really my thrust. It's not only enrolling them for a sale, but enrolling them into living their vision, enrolling them into doing maybe if they believe in a higher uh, consciousness in doing the creator's work and enrolling them into who they were meant to be and have that happen. And so if I can do that in, in huge groups, that's what my goal is, is to, I've spoken in groups of maybe 300. I, I had the um, audience is there of a thousand, but my group, we had 10 groups, so to speak, of like 300 each. Um, so I haven't personally gone out to the 1000 uh, group yet, but my goal is to speak to thousands and have them look into their heart and mind. And, and, and one of the topics I talk about is what are you thinking? <laughs> It's like, come, let's talk. What are you thinking today? Can we look at that and shift your thinking for tomorrow? Absolutely. And get those thoughts into a nice, straight direction that'll accelerate your movement forward. And you can skip those steps and you don't have to walk up 20 steps, but you can make three strides and jump and get there. Because I remember the skipping classes in elementary school, in, in high school, and it felt good. 
you know? So I want to help people skip some steps just because they're so inspired and motivated. So if I have three to four facilitators, coaches working with me, I can be anywhere in Costa Rica, you know, um, in, in the islands, um, in the little island of Tobago, where uh, Trinidad and Tobago, where I come from, and be traveling, but still be attentive to my tribe, to my clients, and still have networking events once a month, which I do right now, second Wednesday of every month, and 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 bring heart centered people together, but a lot more engaging and rolling and speaking rather than just the one and one that I'm doing right now and smaller groups. So. Hopefully those groups may grow and I'll get an online. That's the goal for the uh, end of this year to have an online program um, and just have a, a small team of coaches to work with me. And uh, that's really as far as how many places I will speak or travel. I don't know. That's wide open. Um um, it's more important for me to reach people, whether it's online or in person, doesn't really matter to me, as long as I can reach tons, thousands, maybe a million or two one day. Fantastic. Well, Rosa, you definitely have spoken it into existence. And it is coming. I mean, we are already inspired and motivated. And I sincerely can't thank you so much, um, you know, for spending the time that you have with us today and sharing your incredible insights and experiences, um, you know, with us today, Rosa. Thank you so much, Prosper. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today and having me share my story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and learning from your expertise. Now, to our viewers... Please help me thank Rosa by signing up to her gift that we're going to be putting in the show notes there. And make sure you really take advantage of this Get Clear, Get Visible assessment tool as she has, um, you know, specified that you need to get to know yourself before you show up to other people and you need to align your values and your vision in order for you to be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I want you to actually remember that alignment is the actual key to attracting the right kind of clients, the ones that are quality and actually make a positive impact in the work that you do because we work in transforming lives, right? So we need to be aligned with the people that we are working so we can help them have a happier existence. Now, until next time, stay prosperous. Bye for now.